Ever since I got back from Montana, the van has just been sitting like this on the street. Honestly, kind of taunting me because as chaotic as it's been at times, I've really wanted to get back to building. Before I continue finishing the closet and building the kitchen, there is one tiny thing I need to take care of first. Don't um, tell the government, but my state inspection sticker expired back in May, and I did not have a chance to renew it before I left on my trip. I could just go and get it inspected now, um, but my driver's side taillight is out, so it wouldn't even pass. Um, but I'm gonna fix that right now. I feel like a little bit of an idiot because for quite a while, my left blinker had been acting strangely, like going twice as fast as usual. And I knew it meant something was probably wrong with the electrical, but I didn't realize it just meant a bulb was out. broke off. So did the other one. from Montana. Yes, a lot more videos, but <laughs> yeah. Um, oh my God, the day I left, I literally destroyed one of my cameras, oh, fell yeah. down the stairs. Well, I passed. I guess my electrical work, if you could call it that, did the trick. So with that out of the way, I can finally keep building. So while I was on the road, I added this very hastily built face frame for my closet here. But now that I'm back home, I've painted it white like the rest of the closet. And I can finally cut some doors to add on top. my two doors. I'm just going to use a hole saw to drill a hole in each of them, similar to the same sort of design I have on the back of my underbed storage. So originally, I was going to paint these cabinet doors white like the rest of the cabinets, but I was talking with my friend Haley and she convinced me that it would probably look a little nicer with that contrast in there. Um, so just keeping it like wood with uh, some stain on it. And um, I agree, I think it would look better. So thanks Haley.
So I've had these doors stained and sealed for a couple of days now, but I've been running into a problem with actually attaching them because I really wanted some concealed hinges for the cabinets, but I realized that concealed hinges require you to have a cabinet door that's at least three quarters of an inch thick. And these doors are made out of half inch thick plywood. So after watching a riveting five minute video on Facebook about all the different types of cabinet hinges, I think I'm just gonna give up on my dreams of a concealed hinge and head back to the hardware store for something more practical. Okay, so I think I finally have the right hardware for the job. This is technically called a semi-concealed partial wrap hinge. Um, had no idea that there were so many types of hinges, but um, this should really end up just showing this little hinge on the side, nothing else. So I'm pretty happy about that. Doors are on and um, just one last step and that is attaching these little um, magnetic door catches so that um, the doors don't just fling wide open while I drive. This is exactly why I wanted to get back to building. Um, they look so good. I feel like they've totally made the space look a thousand times better. And um, now that those are done, I think it's finally time to stop procrastinating and move on to the kitchen. Look, I'm not gonna call it procrastination exactly, it's more like prioritization, but it is December now and I leave for my next trip tomorrow. And I have not done anything to the van since you've seen me last. In my defense, I have a really good excuse as to why I've been so busy and you'll see why that is very soon. But in the interest of actually feeling ready to leave this time, I've decided to dedicate the next 24 hours to completing everything on this list. So the first thing I've got to take care of is cleaning the van. And um, that is beyond just wiping the floors down because currently the inside of the van looks like this. I've basically just turned this thing into a giant trash receptacle at this point. So I think it's probably time to go to the dump. I'm gonna do is fill up my gas tank but there is something that I technically left off the list and that is picking up my passenger at the airport so let's go take care of both of those things last Christmas I traveled down to Florida to visit family accompanied by my twin brother in my first ever long-distance trip in the van and even though there was basically nothing in it at the time but a floor and some insulation, it was a successful trip. But I think it's gonna be a lot more comfortable this time around.
Okay, I got a full tank of gas, and now it's on to the airport. Okay, in my defense, this box was very weak, like I didn't have any- like it would just collapse when I pushed in, so don't judge me on this one. So I've got to leave in a little less than an hour, and even though I didn't get everything done on that list, I do have to do one final thing, and that is packing the van. Once again, I am painfully underprepared for this, but at least I'm not still building the van on the day that I leave, unlike my last trip. Well, I still can't exactly say I've left for a trip feeling totally ready, but at least I didn't cry this time. cheap here too and I hate New Jersey. Please don't pop my gas for me. Why do you do that? Someone explain. After a few more hours in the van, we arrived at our stop for the night in North Carolina. And despite it being almost 11 p.m. by the time we finally got there, we managed to enjoy a campfire before resting for another full day of driving. The entire next day was spent on the road until we made it to our mom's house in Florida, where we basically spent the next week eating, watching movies, and opening gifts. But now it's time to finish what I started before I keep driving south plus a couple of other things that I forgot to add to this list. So the first thing that I forgot to do was to re-secure this countertop back down. Um, it is just temporary. I do plan to replace it with something nicer um, and didn't get around to it um, after I returned from my trip to Montana. So. It'll still be just a little bit longer until I get the real thing in here. But for now, I think it'll be nice to have a countertop that actually stays in place. is all finished and now on to uh, the thing I've kind of been putting off a little bit. Okay, so before I touch anything, I'm gonna go into my electrical cabinet here and just... You might have noticed this red wire just dangling above my head here in the driver's seat and uh, that is where the alternator charger switch once was. Basically, I'm just not an electrician and um, I didn't do a good enough job crimping the connections together. So after so many miles of driving and all the vibrations from the road, uh, the switch just fell right off into my lap. It's easy enough to repair. It's pretty straightforward. I have all the tools here with me to do it, but uh, I just hope it doesn't take me too long. So thankfully, um, my dad let me borrow this before I left, but this is uh, steel fish tape. It fishes electrical wires out from like behind walls. Uh, so I'm hoping to just use it to 
sneak in there and find the negative wire so I can reconnect it. too much time on this, but I do need to take care of that eventually. Luckily, I think I should have plenty of sun for the rest of this trip to charge up my battery with the solar panel, but when I return home, it'll probably be a lot more necessary. It's also kind of a double failure because I forgot to bring my mosquito nets, so I can't really do that either. That means there's only one thing left to do. Mm -hmm. 